Hello, and welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast. This is Adventures with Outdoor Woman, and here's your host, Mrs. Susie Roloff. All right. Hey, guys, what's going on? Susie Q here with the Adventures with Outdoor Woman podcast as part of the Paddle and Fin podcast. Tonight, I've got an upper, another epic guest with me tonight. I have Mr. Titus Dominguez. He is part of the Kayak Bass League staff and also uh, helping out with uh, Rockton Adventures. And uh, we're going to talk with him tonight. Uh, he's uh, one of my favorite kayak fishing people. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get to know more about him. So, Titus, go ahead and take it away. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how you got into kayak fishing, and go from there. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, Susie. I'm excited to do this, my first podcast. So, yeah. you know, just getting into it. Um, I'm here in uh, Carroll Stream, Illinois. That's where I, I live, where I'm kind of from. I'm from most like an LDL Elgin area of uh, Illinois. Uh, I've been fishing, you know, most of my life, like a lot of people that <laughs> come on these shows. So uh, I got into fishing, started with, um, you know, tail all this time. My dad got me into it. Little twist, he actually, uh, he he doesn't fish a lot himself, but he got and uh, checked out a book from the library. And went and took me and me and my brother fishing for the first time. And that's how I learned to do it, you know. And Oh, wow. <laughs> that's how kind of how all this stuff started. Nice. So back before the Internet got started. Yeah, back before <laughs> the Internet got started, before you, you could just YouTube how to fish and everything. You know, I, I was like, it, it was just, you know, a cool experience to start off. And, and then it started to grow from there slowly. So awesome. Awesome. Good deal. Do you guys ever go fishing out in a boat or are you just uh, shore fish? Yeah, we mostly just bank fished a lot. Um, and then we ended up starting going to, uh, to South Padre Island in Texas, to fish the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, man. And yeah, it, it, we started taking like family trips there like once a year. And that's kind of how we started uh, fishing for redfish and trout. Oh, nice. Yeah. Down, yeah. So we started wait. I would, we would go and just kind of like find a, any inlet we can get into and, and wade. And, um, you know, we were doing that probably was about like 10 like 10 to 15 years old, that kind of thing. And I just kind of wanted to find something like that up here, you know, target fish. And that's how I found smallmouth bass specifically and largemouth bass. Nice. Started, started wading rivers up here and uh, got into that and then got it into a kayak as soon as I, I was able to uh, have storage for one. <laughs> Great. So, <laughs> I bought my first one from Menards on Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I right. got that, started fishing out of that, and uh, quickly spiraled into what it is now. So <laughs> yeah, it seems to be the case how uh, everybody gets started. You know, they start off in some El Cheapo kayak, you know, and then that's how they kind of discover the world of uh, fishing kayaks. And yeah. then they're like, oh, yeah, the addiction yeah, to start a man. <laughs> gotta do this. Yeah. Because I actually was fishing through, um, I don't, uh, this was a website called dupageangler.com. And that's kind of how I met some of the guys that would eventually become KBL, you know, the, who I'm fishing with now and stuff. And, um, you know, just met a lot of guys like uh, Dan and Jason and Alan and Tony, these guys that we've been fishing with. And we would meet up and do like, short, you know, bank tournaments and, and things like that. And that was actually the first time I really fished with other people. I mostly just fished kind of by myself a lot. And then when uh, Alan, JC and uh, Tony and those guys started KBL, I signed up real quick for that. So. Awesome. Awesome. And so, yeah, you've been a part of the staff with uh, KBL for quite some time now. Uh, yeah, uh, I was uh, the first year I wasn't staff. And then the second year I was they brought me on to, to help out with <laughs> stuff and just check ins and things like that. So. All right. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> any uh, any interesting or uh, fun experiences that you've had with uh, KBL so far? I mean, I know I'm in it, too. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> We've had some good times there, <laughs> right? I mean, it, it's just been it's just been fun. I really like I really like doing it. I like fishing with everybody, meeting people. Um, I'm not the most competitive person in the world, so like I, I don't really get too involved into the, the actual tournaments. But like I just I like going out and fishing them and mm-hmm. and manage to, to cash a few checks every once in a while. So right, yeah, I, you've done pretty fun. good a few times, uh, I believe. Uh, what was it? Uh, was it last year or the year before at the championship? You had big bass on day two. Yeah, big bass day two. It was I was yeah. actually leading day one too. Just couldn't close it out. Right. So that was tough. But. Yeah. And what was that like a twenty-one? Yeah, twenty-one. 
Yeah, little... twenty one. That was that was a nice pass. And man, you were just you were grinding. It was oh, just like was... every time I looked, you were like <laughs> on a, the move i mean it was just like man titus is just in beast mode right now <laughs> yeah, i think that i think the lines out was two o'clock i caught that fish at 1 30 yeah it was, yeah it was the end of the day i was just desperate i only had two fish that day like i said i was at you know uh in the lead at the end of day one but couldn't find couldn't figure him out the day two it was just tough you know i'm still working on that right. two day tournaments nice <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I know you've got a, a new kayak uh, for this year. You've now got a Kusa HD. Yeah, Kusa HD. That's my that's my ride. Nice. And uh, you've also got uh, the, as everybody likes to call it, the Torchito. Torchito. <laughs> yep. Just <laughs> was, uh, fortunate enough to get get a little Torchito mounted up and uh, use that at the end of the year. I had, actually didn't uh, have it most of the season. I was really um, kind of nervous about trying it out in a tournament setting. Mm-hmm. So I finally got it set in, and uh, yeah, that's that's might be the end of my paddling days. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you're just gonna go big and go home, right? Well, might as well, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I seen uh, I seen you using it uh, at the uh, Crossroads tournament uh, back yeah. in September. Was that like one of the first time you'd used it, or had you used it, had a chance to use it before? I think no. I think I used it for the KBL Championship. Uh, last year was that was might have been the first time I used it. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, yeah, but I, I had it set up and I was ready to go for that, but uh, because I that was a two days big body of water, I wanted to make sure I could cover right a lot of space. Yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on it so far? Um, it's awesome, <laughs> <laughs> yep, worth the investment. <laughs> it's yeah, definitely worth it. Uh, it was pretty sweet. I just, I honestly just like being able to move to different spots and just you know quickly get where I need to get and. It, you can cover so much more water with like that. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That. Yep. Definitely do have an advantage with that. And uh, you've been to a KBF national championship. Uh, you were down there with me in uh, 2017. 2017. Yeah, You're right? Susie. That was... <laughs> <laughs> that was one heck of a couple of days, you know, and like that was my first time fishing a big tournament like that. Well, I mean, the championship of all. Yeah, things. I mean, that's big the, lake the like biggest that. one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like day one, you know, we kind of all went our separate ways. I can't remember where you had went. And uh, like after day one, I was just like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like I was like in the top 10 or yeah. top 12 or something like that. And you guys were just all like, what'd you do? How'd you do it? And, like, and I'm like, you guys are better than me. Like, how did this happen? I don't even know. And it was funny because... Um, I had actually gotten some um, some help from you like the night before because you were showing me how to tie um, uh, like leader on braid because I yeah. didn't have anything set up real good or whatever and you were showing me how to tie that and then you gave me a couple of shaky heads. I do remember that. <laughs> yes, and that is actually that was the bait. Yeah, that was the bait to use. It was the shaky heads with the uh, yum ribbon tail worms. So if it wouldn't have been for you, I mean. <laughs> hey, no, you, you got it done. You got to get them in the boat. You got to take the pictures. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. But, but that, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's like one of the cool things about it. And, I, you know, the reason, the main reason I, I went down there, I, I haven't been back since, but I, I wanted that experience one time, you know, doing a tournament that big and just kind of seeing how it all is. And, you know, like, like you said, you learned something from me. I definitely picked something up from you that term because you were like, just keep it simple. I, you know, we were struggling all week, I believe, if I remember, Yes. you know, like nobody was really on fish and you're just like, you know, just keep it simple. And that's something I've been able to translate into, you know, later tournaments and then been able to kind of, kind of work out. I got some little, little things that I've done. I know like, um, one of the stories I have from, uh, the KBL is, uh, actually the first time I cast a check, I think it was second or third place. It was at spring, spring Lake. I had, uh, five bites all day, not five fish, not five keepers, five bites. And it was the weirdest thing. Cause I always felt like that people that, you know, cash checks or one tournaments always killed it. You know, you're, you're when you're not doing good, you're always kind of thinking these guys must be killing it. They must be catching fish like crazy. And that was kind of the first time I realized it's just about, you know, five good minutes. You catch five fish, the right five fish you're in the mix. All right. Yep. That's right, you know, and every time, you know, I've always like 
come up to you when we've been fishing for a tournament or pre-fishing or just out and about, you know, you just, you always seem so chill and like, I, I love it, you know, cause I'm just like, Hey, Titus, what's up? He's like, Oh, you know, just chill now or whatever, you know? And sometimes I haven't even caught anything and I'll just be like, Oh, I haven't caught anything, you know, all frustrated or whatever. But then like, I get to talking to you and I'm like, you know what? It's not so bad. You know, you put yeah. like a different, uh, you have like a different perspective that you give me. So I always value that when we're out fishing. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, I, I, some people have mentioned that to me and I kind of like, you know, like that. It's, I read real laid back. I actually picked that up from uh, our friend, Tony Lamb. He's one of those guys. It's like, he's, he'll be, he was eating snacks and stuff. And I picked that up from him for some reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> many times I'll be, you know, I'll have a four, a four fish. I'll be waiting to catch my fifth. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm a little hungry. I might get, get some snacks. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, when we were at, uh, um, Mazonia, we kind of cruised around for a while, yeah. you know, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. He, yeah. He showed me a couple things. I was like, oh, okay, you know, kind of helped gain some confidence back. So yeah, definitely awesome to, uh, have that, uh, camaraderie. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, da, 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 looking over my notes here. <laughs> um, notes. now, um, I know from Mazonia and a couple other, uh, uh, tournaments and whatnot, you know, I know a couple of your, uh, kind of go-to key oh, baits, go -to baits, but, uh, yes. right. Yeah. What would be your probably top three or five? Ooh, top three to five go-to, uh, I'll, I'll keep it kind of general. We can get, maybe get specific too, if you want, but definitely, um, chatterbait, Texas rig, wacky rig, Ned rig, and then maybe time, depending on the time of the year, swim jig or, uh, uh, square bill. So nice. probably, probably my go-to's. I really don't um, branch out too much from those, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, I kind of that's actually one of the things I, I really learned quickly in the tournament scene was that I got to be comfortable doing what I'm doing the day of. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to have you know I'll try to be learning something. I know early on fishing the tournaments at first, I was trying to do whatever the you know the hot technique would be or whatever versus doing what I'm comfortable with. Right. Yep. And, but those are definitely my my uh, my top baits. Um, I rig them up usually either with like a the Ned rig. I've really been liking a Reaction Innovations bait, the uh, the Smalley Beaver three and a half inch one. Mm -hmm. Those are perfect on there. Or a, a Biz Baits uh, Baby Bug, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. Really love those, especially on the river. It's versatile. You throw it in the river, throw it in a lake. Right. You know me. I'm just looking any find me some structure, some weed edge some down timber rocks, something, and just throw those, those four or five baits and see what happens. Nice. Awesome. What's, uh, what's your personal best? Ooh, personal best. Um, large, I think it was that, that 21 inch uh, one at the championship for uh, KBL. Oh no, no. Uh, at, at, at Kentucky the KBL Lake. national championship. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Kentucky Lake. <laughs> 21 yep. and a half. So it was it 21 was and a half. Bigger. Yep, that that was a stud. That fish was a too. Whew, that was fun. <laughs> that was a crazy day too because uh, day two, um, everybody was like, "Well, hey, do you mind if uh, we just come with you, Susie?" I was like, "Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I don't care, you know." Yeah. <laughs> and so it was me, you, Scott, um, Paul, Paul. Yeah. Um, who else did Alan and Tony come out no, there? No, Alan too? and Tony were at, were on a different spot. Yeah, different they went place. to a different spot, and then was a teeth there. God, I can't even remember. It's been. <laughs> I mean, it's been quite like, stuff. <laughs> right. And uh, we were fishing all this um, this one area, and then all of a sudden Scott comes on. He's like, "Oh my god!" And I think he had a twenty. Yeah. And then you came on, you're like, Oh my <laughs> God, you had a 21 and a half. And like, you know, yeah. we're just all like, Oh my God, there's huge fish in here. And then like, it was what, like an hour and a half later or something. I got that 22 and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> that was a, that was a yeah. crazy day. That was an amazing day. It was awesome. <laughs> um, what, uh, what's your favorite place you like to go up to in your area? Lake river. Okay. Uh, um, so my home, like I, it's kind of a like a love hate because I would say I, would, I wouldn't say it's my favorite place. It's just the place I go the most is Bussy Woods out here in uh, at Schaumburg. Mm -hmm. It's notoriously bad. I will say that. <laughs> That's notoriously what I bad lake. But I, I just I don't know why I love fishing it. Um, I think it's 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 like uh, it's sneaky good. So the, there's no big fish, <laughs> but you can go and you can have good days there. And uh, I actually kind of like because I'll, I'll I'll be doing good and um, you know paddling by somebody and some of them be you know are there any fish in this lake or anything and I'm like you know kind of 
<laughs> right? Just be like, eh, there might be, there, there might, might be. be. <laughs> but it, it's it is not the best lake in the world. But it's it's my home lake. It's my fun lake. I go there after work. I get there in twenty minutes, and nice. you know, launch is easy. It's big enough that I don't get bored. I can explore. It's got a you know, bunch of different cover. It's got a few spots that are my bread and butter, my favorite, which is a weed line like with a 10, 12 foot drop off right by it. Ooh. Yeah. That I, I see that one of those good. on the graph and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is my spot. That was, um, what, what tournament was it? I think it was rock. Was it rock Lake in on the up in Wisconsin this year? Where I, I had a second place finish. I'm guessing so. Cause I didn't make it to that one. Okay. Then it, I think it was that yeah. one. Yep. And it was a huge lake, but I, so I launched way down, uh, on the southern end somewhere paddled way up to this backwater bay and got in there and it was all it was all weeded up and like 10 foot drop offs and four foot drop offs i was like this is this is my spot <laughs> right <laughs> and ended up ended up just finding uh finding a lot of good fish in there so yep nice nice what uh what was your uh your winning technique that day Ooh, that day was chatterbait a chatterbait it was, yeah. A, yeah it was a mix of chatterbait and swim jig i was just ripping it through uh through weeds yeah i think okay. i had I had an hour, about an hour, probably from eight to nine o'clock where it was, it was every, every cast was a fish, either a, a pike, cow. yeah, a <laughs> pike or a bass. I mean, I didn't have a ton of upgrades. I knew the whole time I'm catching, like I needed this one, one more upgrade, but it was just yeah. a fun hour, man. Hey, right. That's always the best time fishing. You know, when you're on them and even yeah. if it is for a short amount of time, it's just like, it's awesome. <laughs> I, I think there was one point where it was legitimately five straight casts where I was I, like in one spot, like I was just kind of bumped into a weed edge and there was just like this one hole that was popping it through and just threw it right back in there. Pop, pop, bam. Oh pop. man. <laughs> this nice. is good. <laughs> right. That was easily the most fish I had caught in a tournament. Cause it was, I, I usually don't do like, I usually don't do no, good numbers wise on tournament days, but that was my best numbers tournament. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, going back to the uh, the Crossroads tournament um, yeah. that both you and I were helping out with. Uh, so we had a little bit of an adventure on, uh, was that? Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> day is this the, one. Uh, the day one, the boat? <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. Yes, this is still, I, I don't understand how this happened, but it happened. Uh, we, we were just hanging out the launch. We were talking to some guys and they were, you know, invited us out on their boat and everybody was, you know, the guys had just launched for the tournament. We were helping out, he said. Um, and we, you know, these guys asked us if we want to come out on their boat. And we thought they were with with the group. Yeah. And they're just these random guys that were had seen the thing on Facebook and wanted to come hang out, and watch the show, I guess. And they were all geeked out because you were the tournament director. And <laughs> we had the tournament director in the boat. They were calling their friends. <laughs> It was wild. <laughs> right. But um, we it was really interesting to get out on the boat, though, because, uh, you know, we were able to get that uh, different view and perspective yeah. of, uh, you know, seeing all the kayak anglers on the water. And, you know, after a while, we got to talking and we're like, you know, it really is kind of hard to see yeah. some of these kayaks. Yeah. And I mean, close. especially the camouflage colored ones like that tiny little oh. orange flag doesn't make them stick out that much either. So, you know, it's kind of understandable that, you know, accidents are kind of going to be more prone to happen. Yeah. It was definitely something that, um, like you said, getting that perspective, I was actually kind of happy that I have, I, I just always had bright colored boats cause that's kind of my style. I had a turquoise one and now I got a bright red one and I'm like, yeah, that's kind of nice that I have that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm going from, a bright orange kayak to a camouflage colored oh, yeah. kayak, you know, so that's going to be a little bit of a change for me, but, um, yeah, it's also, you know, just really good to, uh, take into account that, you know, to always be aware of your surroundings, especially when we had the, uh, the incident on, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> later on. So, um, but, uh, yeah, we had some fun out there. Uh, you were, man, you were crushing them on the chatterbait, yeah, um, chatterbait out think, there. Uh, Texas rig ended up being pretty good, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then uh, we went to this one spot. It was, man, it was way up on like the northern part. And uh, we were fishing this um, kind of like there's like this weird ledge kind of like yeah. in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I was throwing a jig around and then I got that nice 18. Yeah, that I remember awesome. that. That was a good <laughs> Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we had some good times out there. Um, think, wasn't that when I cost you a little bit of money there? <laughs> Let me try, out, <laughs> try out my reel. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, you, uh, what, got, it was what? 
Tatula SV. Yeah, Daiwa Tatula SV. And uh, as soon as like I put my first cast with that thing, I was like, oh, man, this is <laughs> nice. And so sure enough, it was what, like maybe a month or so later, uh, Scott was selling them. And yeah. uh, he had two. He had two different ones. He had like an 8.1 and then like a, the six, right? a 6 or something like that. Yeah. And so like I messaged you, I was like, are these good reels? <laughs> <laughs> Like, and he's like, oh, oh yeah, and then like the price he was selling them for, I was like, okay, okay, I yeah. I, I gotta buy it. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So yeah, I invested in those. I just gotta get uh, two more uh, rods to pair them up with. So I'll be working on that. There you go. Right. And then uh, let's see here. I I noticed that you've got a a golden bass trophy behind you there. <laughs> you got that back there. Yeah. Uh, what's that from? That is from the uh, Vandalia and Coffeen uh, tournament. I believe it was actually a makeup tournament. It was a team, a team tournament. I was paired up with, oh, man, I'm blanking on the name right now. But, Dan um, Miller? Dan Miller, yes, that's who it is. I was paired up with Dan Miller, and uh, we were the best team in the thing. I, I totally forgot that I was going to get a trophy for that. Because <laughs> it was, it was, I believe it was the end of the season for KBL, right? The best mm -hmm. team overall yep. got that. And then uh, I – Unfortunately, a schedule conflicts couldn't make the uh, the potluck. That's always a good time that we do at the end of the season. And then uh, when we had our staff staff meeting, <laughs> Alan was like, "Hey, here's your trophy." I'm like, "Okay, this is awesome." <laughs> yeah, you were really stoked for that trophy. I was, too. was I, I almost retired to be honest with you. I almost <laughs> just said, "Guys, you know what? Thank you. I'm out. This was <laughs> this was enough. This is all I ever wanted." <laughs> I've I've come close a couple. Like I said, I had second place finish this year. I have a few thirds and stuff. It was I've always been so close. Right. So now to have one on the on the mantle there is that's it. I might right. walk away. <laughs> we well, gotta keep going, right? <laughs> I gotta keep going. I try. All right, I'll try to get a couple more. But if I get two, then I you know then I might be out. <laughs> Man, so soon. <laughs> so soon. Hey, it's, I'm easy to please, I guess. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what uh, what big plans do you have for 2020? Ooh, you know I I do have a lot of plans. I definitely have some some goals. That I've set for myself. Uh, number one goal is definitely I want to make that the Crossroads tournament. Yeah, I want to fish that. We helped it. We helped it out. That was that was so fun. That's the kind right? of stuff I was just like instantly. This is this is a great time. The team aspect was so cool. Right. So that's certainly on my list of things to do. Um, you know, like you mentioned, I joined the uh, the Rocktown Adventures team over the the winter. So definitely just kind of getting more involved with them. We're kind of getting the ball rolling on that. So that stuff's going to be in the works and then uh, just fishing KBL tournaments and trying to take one down. That's, that's my plan. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know we've talked a little bit about too, uh, with me being on the Hobie fishing team. Now I'll be getting my second Hobie um, here in a couple of months. Uh, I know we talked about maybe doing, I don't know, Lake St. Clair. <laughs> yeah. There's a few, this is, you've tried to talk me into some tournaments. So Right. Lake oh, St. Yeah. Clair, that's definitely on the list. And then the one the one I got to do is a salmon tournament with you that oh, I've yes. been raving about for years. That's the one I really want to get get a get a chance at that. So Oh yeah, yeah. We'll I'll make sure that we definitely get you on fish for that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's coming up on uh September twelfth. Uh so yeah, to our watchers and listeners, uh get that date down. Manitowoc Marina, Wisconsin. Yes. Um I think it's pending permits right now, but uh it's usually always the uh, weekend after Labor Day. Um, so, yeah, it's an amazing time. Um, I caught a 26-pound king last year. That That's was awesome. Fun. Yeah, and then um, Keith, he had a 30-pound and a 33-pound or something. They were That's nuts. massive. I don't even, I don't, I don't know what I would do with a fish that big. <laughs> right. <laughs> you smoke it. Is what yeah. You, <laughs> it I need like a 15 minute break after I catch a five pound <laughs> bass. So like, I don't know what's going to happen if I catch a 25 pound salmon. <laughs> right. Again, yeah. I, might, I might just retire at that point. That might be the, all right, I got a trophy. I got a salmon. I'm out. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just post on Instagram, my random trips. That would be it. Nice, nice. Uh, let's see here. Um, now, I know um, whenever I've seen you fish, too, you don't usually carry a lot of rods with you. I know you have usually go only got, like, four. I mean, mean, yeah, four right. is usually the most. I, I try to limit it to four. A tournament day, I, I could t uh, t potentially bring a fifth and a sixth. Usually, that's just a backup rod. That's not a 
it's, it's something if something goes wrong. But yeah, I'm lean and mean. Four four rods. I try to keep it down to like two boxes and a and a box of plastics. I'm very uh, very minimalist when it comes to. Man, how accept. do you do it? <laughs> uh, one is just being a little cheap. <laughs> like, that's one aspect of it. But also, I just. I, like we we went and talked talked about um kind of you know my approach to tournaments. That's one of the things I just I really like to lock in on what I know, mm-hmm. and so you know I I've found that if I keep the gear limited, what's actually in the boat, it limits what I actually do. You know I, I'm not t- tying on stuff. I'm not second guessing myself. I only have so many things I can use. Right. Yeah. So it helps me out, and then it, it just kind of keeps me dialed in. But I you know and I've kind of. I feel like I need to be flexible on a kayak, so I want to have four rods that kind of do a couple of different things for me, and then just stick to those. Yeah, nice. What uh, what setups do you have on all on your four rods that you usually take? Four oh, or five? So, yeah, my so my four my four main ones. Uh, my pride and joy is my uh, Shimano X Pride, paired with the uh, Cronark MGL. That's my baby. <laughs> that's my that's my chatterbait rod. <laughs> nice. I did uh, I did a rage by that after uh, I had a Mega Bass Levante that that snapped on a cast. So, oh. yeah, that was, and uh, that, that was actually after the turn. So that I u- was using that Mega Bass rod to take second place on the chatterbait at uh, <laughs> at the tournament, and then you know was using it the next day at Bussy Woods or something and snapped it. I was like, all right, you know what? Sh- saw Shimano X Prize were back in stock. Picked those up. Had that. Um, I have my other three are Phoenix rods. Yeah. So I have a Phoenix feather, yeah, a light, a light rod, or a medium light rod that's paired up with uh, a Chronarch MGL, um, and then the medium heavy that's paired up with the Chronarch MGL, uh, Phoenix feather rod as well. That's my Texas rig rod, uh, kind of you know my bottom contact. My light one is my finesse rod. Actually, I only take three. That's my <laughs> those are my main three. Okay. Yeah, and then my fourth one is is that's the one that rotates out. It's either a frog rod. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, that's that's a Phoenix rod feather, and then um, that one I have with a uh, Tatula SV. If you're yeah. with that. And then our or the other one is a crankbait rod, and that's a, a Phoenix X10. Mhm. Nice, nice, pretty good setups you got going there. So. Yeah, you know I've kind of got those dialed in now. So, and I actually I really like those Phoenix feather rods. They're not they're not terribly expensive, but they're uh, they're good quality stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, I got uh, you. Uh, I uh, held the Phoenix Feather one yeah. one time. I can't remember when that was. I was like, man, this is super light. It was awesome. So, but yeah, you know, it, it's always interesting to see, you know, um, you know, just what people use and take with them uh, fishing yes. for tournaments, you know, and I'm just, I'm always amazed, you know, by how little you have, you know, and <laughs> it, it, it really yeah. does though come down to confidence, you know, you know what you know. You know, you're confident with what you use yeah. and, you know, what, what more do you want, you know? And I guess, you know, it's hard for some people to do, you know, I mean, me for one thing, I was just like, oh, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do yeah. this, you know? And then sometimes it gets myself overwhelmed too, you know? Well, I so. think, what was it? The first two seasons I fished KBL, I don't even think I caught a fish during a tournament. Right. So it yeah. was just like, I was, and I, and, you know, I catch fish all the time. I'm like, what the heck is happening? I was just, I was just <laughs> second guessing all this other yes. stuff. So I finally kind of got dialed in, and that, that actually goes back to the uh, the KBF National Championship I fished with you, because you had said, you know, just keep it simple, and that was something that it translated and stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. Um, man, I was just going to say something. I, I know, me too. I just had, <laughs> oh, so, I, you know, I, I remember my, because that's it's a little uh, technique, little tips I do, and you'll actually appreciate this. I actually call it my uh, Captain America strategy, which is, I can do this all day. That's what nice. I try to do when I go into tournaments. I, I try to find whatever it is that I feel comfortable and confident doing all day. So nice. whatever that is, if it's, uh, you know, like I think at the, um, this past championship, it was throwing those little crankbaits, you know, at the last, at the Rock Lake one, it was the chatterbaits, whatever I can find that I, get, I comfortable. Like, all right, I can do that all day. <laughs> nice. I like it. I approve. I like it. I know. <laughs> right. You know, and I mean, that's another cool thing, you know, that we share too, is we've, uh, we've both got a big geek side yeah, very, <laughs> to both of us, you know, strong. we're always talking yeah. about, uh, you know, the Marvel movies, Star Wars, TV shows too. So yeah, yeah I like it. <laughs> it was funny how, um, uh, yeah, with, uh, when, uh, Game of Thrones was going on, you know, we'd be texting <laughs> each other, you know, be like, oh my God, what just yeah. happened? <laughs> yell texting each other all this stuff right <laughs> um but yeah you know that that kind of brings up an interesting point though when it comes to um you know like fishing tournaments and keeping it simple 
You know, sometimes, you know, when we see other people fishing and they're just smashing them and we don't have a whole lot with us, you know, it just gets to our head and we're just like, oh, I should have done something different, you know? Yeah. I, you know, I should have brought this with me, you know, second guessing yourself and, you know, not doing yourself any good that way too. But, you know, I think it really does come down to, you know, those confidence baits yeah. and, um, you know, I've been, I've been working on, <laughs> I remember the 2017 championship. <laughs> I brought every single like yeah, every box piece. I had, it was, it was insane. Like I had this Tupper, this huge Tupperware container just full yes. of stuff and i brought it with me because i was just like i don't you know what know. i'm doing <laughs> right you never yeah. know you never know so <laughs> and then it came down to you know the shaky head and the ribbon tail worm that's all it was yeah. and i was just like well man if i would have known that <laughs> yeah but, i know for that I, I think i bought a bunch of like six xds and all these other crankbaits that i thought i was going to use and <laughs> right, yeah. down there and i'm throwing a wacky rig on docks it's like okay this is that's not it. I have no re use for these. <laughs> right. I remember we'd go to like those random gas stations along the highway. Yeah. Uh, down in Tennessee, we're like, all right, where can we find some big crankbaits, you know? <laughs> <And> just... <laughs> Was it down in Tennessee that we got the, the fish and tips or shrimp and tips? Oh, God, where was that? Uh... <laughs> or was that somewhere in central oh, Illinois? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like that was down in Tennessee. What I think it mean? was. Right? That... Oh God! Because it was the, the, like knuckle, that. the knuckle meat. The knuckle meat. That was some knuckle. It was some greasy knuckle meat. And that was. <laughs> also learned that real quickly. You know, eat smart before the a tournament day. Yes. Yep. <laughs> don't have yep. any stomach issues out there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because uh, we had all went to. Um, it's a little restaurant. I don't even remember what day it was, and uh, like it started storming. It was like pouring outside. Yeah. And like there was what like stromboli or like what was yeah. all that pot that heavy pasta stuff and like she just keeps bringing out all this stuff and everybody's looking at each other like what did we just do? Yeah. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh! But yeah, those are some good times. Um, but yeah, um, you know, me myself personally, you know, definitely need to you know, work on just, you know, calming down during tournaments or whatever. Cause like, you know, I'll be going by and asking people how they're doing and everything. And, you know, people are like, yeah, you know, I'm doing pretty good. You know, I got like a couple 18s or whatever. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and that's, it's weird. Cause I, you know, you hear that and it just, it stresses you out, but you kind of have to just relax and do what you do. You know, one of the things I, I really started doing, the year before and then this year, it really has helped me out is I stop or I try to like make the fish or the, the lake work for me. So like, I don't go and do the thing that looks good for the lake. I go, what do I like that the lake has? So I, I like, I like weeds. I like, you know, down trees. So I go, if there's any weeds on this lake, I'm going to find them. I'm going to fish them. Oh, ah, that's nice. That's a, that's a good insight. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like, try uh, always try to go, all right, well, what does this lake have that I can do? You know, or that, you know, that I can try out and try something new that I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I just paddle around and I go, all right, where can I, I fish? And you know, just little things like getting out of the wind. That is yeah. something I, I realized I had to do because I just, yeah. I can't fight it. And I, a lot of times I was out trying to fish deep and, and just getting blown into the bank and that wasn't, that wasn't working. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in smaller kayaks too, and even in Hobies too, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you're in, you know, I mean, you get a good, you know, decent wind, it's hard to keep your yeah. position, you know, and if you're trying to fish in deep water and, you know, fish like some of these big drop offs and everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not fun at all. So yeah, definitely, um, good advice to, uh, you know, Make the lake work for you. Yeah, you know, I like that. You. <laughs> right? Yeah. I yeah. got all these little, I'm like an old man, basically. I got all these little things. <laughs> little right? Tips. I uh, I definitely like the uh, the Captain America thing, yeah, though. You, I knew like, you would like that. that was, I, I dig that. I dig that. I can do this all day. I can do this all day. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, so I, like, I just, I learned that real, forget what, I think it was I, I, that, that first time I cashed a check. I really go back to that tournament a lot because like I said I had the five bites all day. And then I was throwing a wacky rig and nobody else was throwing it, which I don't know if that was working or whatever, but it was, just, I knew that if I just kept pitching it, that I would catch fish. You know, I didn't know if I would catch five, if I catch big ones, but I knew, Hey, eventually I'm going to grind them out. And I think right. that day lines out was uh, one o'clock. I caught my last fish at 1245. 
Wow. So, so that was another thing that like helped me out. Like I realized I don't have to have a limit by eight o'clock, you know, a lot of times that would just psych myself out. I'd be like, Oh, right. You yeah. Running I, into people and... Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely relate to, you know, I mean, my first couple of years, you know, with KBL and great lakes and whatnot, you know, the, the first season or two, you know, wasn't really too big of a deal because yeah, like I didn't catch much of anything. I think maybe I caught one or two fish. Um, but then like, uh, which, which championship was it? Yeah, it was a championship where you, you had that, uh, that big bass on day two. And that was at, um, Jacksonville, right? Jack- Jacksonville. Yep. Jacksonville. I think, did I completely strike out or did I only get one fish? I can't. I might've had one day. I two, think right? I might've had one on day two, but like, that's all I had. And like, I was just like beyond yeah, myself, like just... mad and upset. And I was just like, you know, I'm worthless. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and just like totally mad and everything, you know, and, you know, looking back at it now, I'm just like, yeah, you know, getting mad and everything's one thing, but I'm just like, what's it going to do for me at the end of the day? You know? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't help. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to look and see, okay, what should I have done, you know, to try to like help myself learn? Okay. You know, maybe I was throwing like 10 different things. I'm like, all right, dumb it down and simple it, you know, simple it down and whatnot. So yeah, definitely to, to take in consideration, you know, and it's always hard too, especially like, you know, with, uh, the KBL chats and stuff that we have, you know, on tournament days, you know, people might be posting pictures, you know, it's hard to not get, you know, wrapped up in that. So, uh, one thing I started doing, uh, in 2019 was, uh, I would just, I would mute Facebook, I would mute some of the chats, um, nice. and then I would just like, you know what, I'm just not fish. gonna look, yeah, 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 I'm just gonna fish, I'm not gonna worry about social media, outside influences, or whatever, you know, if I see other people and they're doing better than me, then hey, you know, give that to be an incentive, be like, all right, you know, they're on fish, they're here, I can figure it out too, you know? Yeah. So. That's why I, I really, uh, you know, like I said, go back to fishing with, with everybody there. You kind of see everybody kind of goes through the same stuff, you know, listening to your guys' podcast and stuff. And everybody that comes on, it's just like, you know, the same kind of things. You know, I'm, I'm getting frustrated, getting struggling. And, you know, you know, so you go, all right, just relax, just fish. Right. Yep, exactly. I mean, yeah, we're all going to have those bad days. Like uh, uh, last year at uh, the championship down in um, Shreveport, Louisiana, Day one, I did pretty decent, you know. I mean, I didn't have, like, the biggest fish or whatever. I think I was in, like, 21st or something like that after day one. But, like, out of 700 anglers, I was, like, stoked. I was, like, all right, this is awesome. I'm doing great, you know. And, like, I was literally fishing up to the last minute on Mm -hmm. day one. And I caught my fifth fish, I think, at, like, five till. Yeah. yeah. Can I get I the mean, picture real quick? I was just like, I was grinding. I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to keep going, keep doing it, you know? And then day two, I just, I don't know what happened. Like, I just, I just, that happens. I, I put all my eggs in one basket, you know, I went to the same spot and I just, yeah, you know, it, it, it happens, you know, and after the end of day one um, or day two, you know, I, I was like, I was mad, but like I was more upset than anything, you know, because again, it goes to that whole like, you know, um, just like self image or just like, you know, just that kind of invisible like the, peer pressure, yeah, the mental aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. the mental aspect of everything, because, you know, like, you know, I've been going to the championships now since 2017, you know, I'm trying to become, you know, a better angler, you know, and I was just like, man, I just. I can't do anything right, you know, and I was getting upset, you know, I called my husband, he helped me out a little bit, but it was a, it was like an hour drive from where I was on Cattle Lake, because I was on the Texas side, so it was a pretty, it was a pretty good drive uh, back to the check-in, and uh, like, that was a long drive for me, because I was just like, you know, I was just like, constantly like tearing myself down, but shaking your head, you're just like, (laughs) right, yeah, exactly, exactly, so like, a day two, you know, we get in, check in and every what everything or whatever. But like, you know, I had made a post too on Facebook, but like the the amount of support that, you know, people would give me after that, I was just like, all right, you know what? It, it's not always about catching fish. You know, it's yeah. not always about, you know, catching your limit. You know, it's much more than that. So I was like, you know what? Day three, I'm just going to go out and try to catch a big bass or whatever. I got a real nice one 
on day three. Nice. So I was pretty happy about that. I caught a few on day three, but uh, I think I was close to getting a big bass at the hour, but I think somebody had beat me. If I would have waited for like another hour or two to post it, I think I would have gotten big bass. It's always <laughs> tricky with those. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. Cause you have to post yeah. it at the right time. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you never know when somebody's going to post a big bass or whatever. So, but anyway, it was, it was still a very good learning experience and uh, was able to take a lot from it. So. Yeah. And I, I know I still struggle with two days. I had uh, one two day tournament where I, the second day I fished the same things thinking just like you said, grind them out, go back to my spots. And mm -hmm. that didn't work. The next yeah. year, the championship, the KBL championship, uh, did good the first day and said, you know what? I got to mix it up because last year I did the same things and then I mixed it up and then that didn't work. So <laughs> right. I was like, like, that did not help me. What is right. going on? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it, it's always just that, that battle of your, of your own mind, you know, just be like, all right, you know, it, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, you know? So yeah, and that yeah. This, this past year at the the KBL championship, that was kind of frustrating. I had, I caught, I was I think I had three fish at, at day two, but I was catching fish all day. They were just eleven inches. So oh was, my god! Yeah, I was oh. drifting back, and I, there was oh. one point I had four fish in a row, four casts. I'm like, bam, bam, catching fish like crazy. I'm like, I'm catching fish, but I'm just not catching the right size. Right. Not... Oh yeah, that that was a a very challenging lake. <laughs> yeah. The, that... uh, the the castle adventure though. I oh, mean, yeah, that, that was fun times. <laughs> that was a really good time. But yeah, that was that was definitely challenging. You know, I think day 1, I think I only had 3. I think I only had 3 on day 1, but I was just like, you know, I told myself I'm like I am not going to get all worked up about this, yeah. you know, whatever. I'm like, this is just whatever it is. And, um, you know, day one wasn't too bad. <laughs> and then I don't know if you were around me or not, but on day two, um, I was kind of hanging out with uh, Pat, uh, the uh, the bridge troll. The bridge troll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just kind of pitter-pattering around or whatever. And, uh, you know, sure enough, I was able to get on five. And, like, I grinded all day for him, too. You know, it was just, man, it was just, it was tough. Yeah, that, that lake was tough. It was, and it was a tough day. Everybody was kind of dealing with the same things. It yeah. was, you had to grind. You had to cover water. You yes. had to, that, that actually, that tournament sold me on, on the torpedo because. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, day <laughs> one, I don't get a limit if I couldn't cover water. And then day two, that just kind of being able to, to work the shoreline and throw, we were, it was a crankbait bite that day. Yeah. So we yep. were just, you know, I needed to just cast, 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 cast. So. All right. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, covering water was key that day or well, both days, you know, because I mean, that north side was what a little bit dirtier than the south or was it vice versa? I can't remember. I don't remember. I see. I, I didn't go too much to the south side and I don't remember a big difference personally, but I know some people yeah. were mentioning. Yeah. Yeah. The further north you went, I think it was either oh, yeah. clear. Yeah, if you went, if you went like, way, way north, no, it got muddy or muddy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it got muddy right. if you went way north. And yeah. I went all the way north and I came all the way back. <laughs> and then you're just like, well, this, this is it's snack time. Where are my sandwiches? <laughs> right. <laughs> Where's my cliff bars? <laughs> yeah, that's my go to. I'm, I'm not having a good time. All right. Cliff bar, sandwich, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Well, wasn't it, was it day one or day two when Brian Butters went to Casey's and got like a sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> <or cheese>? Stop. <laughs> I was going to food. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He just he stopped for lunch. He he went into his car and went to Casey's and he got <laughs> something to eat and then yeah, came uh, back. I was like, hey, flex. <laughs> right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get some gas. Do a little shopping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Time. Just, just what time? Is, what time's lines out too? All right. Yeah, right. Yeah. I got time for a nap. Right? Time for a nap. <laughs> I have not done that yet. I have not, I have not taken a nap on the water. I know some oh, people gosh. will nap or take a car, go to the car and nap. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I haven't done that either, but, uh, I've actually, uh, accidentally slept in, um, not, uh, 2018 championship day two. It, that was a tough year that, Oh God. That oh, was... the KBF one. Yeah. That no, no, no KB. Did. Yeah. KBF. Uh, uh, it was, uh, tough, yeah. One. Kentucky Lake. I mean, like I went down there and it was like 74 degrees and then it got colder throughout the week and it snowed on that Tuesday. And I was just like, oh, my God. I remember uh, Thursday morning, I had driven way south. You know, I drove yeah. like 40, 45 minutes south just to try fishing. And I remember, <laughs> I remember sitting on the ramp in my car 
and it said 30 degrees. And I was just uh-huh. like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I wouldn't have got out. I would have been like, yeah, we're good today. Yeah, I sat in there for probably a good 30 minutes before I even moved. <laughs> I was just like, no, <laughs> I'm not. No. <laughs> So I, I I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely a summertime fisherman. Yes. Yeah. My shorts, my flip flops, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Although, you know, after, um, after last year, you know, doing the Michigan kayak trail and a couple other tournaments like springtime fishing, there's something different about it than, than summertime. Like I don't get me wrong. I love my topwater bite. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Plopper and frog. Oh, yeah. I'll never get rid of that. But, like, there was something about just, like, springtime. It was, like, things started kind of, like, clicking for me a little bit better. Yeah. It's like, okay. You know, because, like, I was at all, I was lost everywhere the- last year. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, you know, interesting just to, you know, get at some of these different lakes and kind of get a feel like, okay, you know, I kind of know what to look out for and kind of what to do and try. So, uh this spring, you know, I'm definitely going to hit up Banner a few times, but, uh, you know, I like definitely want to try, <laughs> I definitely want to try Spring Lake too. Um, just because I've heard rumors, whether or not it's true or not, that there might be a state record in there. I don't know who's to believe know, but, <laughs> right. I believe it. To, you know, there has got to be a state record somewhere. I think, you know? I'll have to check again, but I think if you check on the Illinois website, they shocked up like a big one. I, I think it's like an eight pounder or something. Well, from what I heard, quote unquote, through the grapevine is they didn't necessarily like publish this one because they didn't want like people to like, you know, swamp the whole area and tear it up, you know, so (laughs) right. Yeah. So I'm just like, all right, you know, I need to give it some good, solid uh, a good solid chance, you know, I yeah. spring Lake is, it's very interesting, you know, because it's just, it's just a big shallow flat. Yeah. You know? And after, what is it like late April, May, those pads start coming up and then it's just, it, it do anything. yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, but like, it, it's tough because like you got the, the main boat pass through all the big lily pads, but then that's it. Like I've, I've paddled through the pads before and that's not as fun. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, but I did catch my, I didn't catch a big muskie in there when, uh, I was doing like a Tuesday night tournament, uh, with a buddy of mine on a boat and I was fishing a missile bait actually. Okay. And I pitched it up right underneath the dock and, you know, what funk and I, you know, set it and I was like, Oh God, <laughs> you know? And then like, I, right. yeah, I like, I saw it come up and I was like, Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those I've only I've only had a few follows from Muskie, and but that is that's a different thing. When you see that thing flash, you're like, oh no, that's not. Oh yeah. Well, you you got the. Did you see me put the Muskie back on Otter Lake? This no, I year? I think I came around the corner just yeah. after you did. Yeah, it must have after I just released it, and like it it shredded my thumb. And yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't have my lip grips with me or anything like that, and so I was trying to get the plopper out. I mean, it was like in the roof of its mouth. There was no yeah. like trying to cut it off or anything like that. I was like, yeah, no, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my gosh. All right. Oh, let's see here. What else do I have? Um. What, um, I don't know, like, what's the, what's the most interesting experience or encounter you've had while Mm. kayak fishing, whether it be like down in Texas or here in Illinois or wherever? Well, yeah, honestly, I don't have a ton of great stories. I actually kind of, I'm actually kind of boring on the water, which is really weird. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, I did have me and my buddy Joey, uh, fished a lot in Bussy Woods, uh, this past year he's been fun to fish with he's just kind of got his first big kayak and stuff so i was getting him into it mm-hmm. but um one night we were out there and it was uh the bite was pretty good but we started seeing some storm clouds rolling in and i just kept wanting to stay out there and we were debating going back but we were close enough to the launch where it wasn't too bad but then all of a sudden out of nowhere man the winds kicked up 20 30 mile an hour winds it was it was nuts like all of a sudden just started blowing us back to shore we were paddling back this is before i had mounted the motor it was it was pretty sketchy. That was the first oh, time we were like, okay, we need to get get out of the out of the wind. 
Because it was right. it was a while. So it started kicking up these waves, and you could see it. It's it's not a big lake. It's like a three hundred acre lake, so it doesn't get like white caps or anything like that. But like to feel like I was, you know, we do that little surfing thing when you're on top of a wave. Doing that on <laughs> Bussy Woods, I was like, this is that's not normal. <laughs> you're right. So, quickly yeah. get off the water. <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of um, when we were on, um, what was it, Wabesa? Yeah, that was... For KBO, yeah, that uh, that storm front came through. Very you know, similar to that. Yeah, that was that was interesting. You know, we were watching the radar throughout the day, and I was kind of like in the northern part. Uh, I think I was on like the upper Mud Lake part or something like that. And, you yeah, know, I... I was too. Yeah, and I could like see stuff like in the horizon and then I started hearing some rumbling. So like I went over to the uh, staff chat and I was like, Hey guys, you know, we may need to keep a heads up, you know, and we saw it. And I think at first we were like, Oh, maybe it's going to bypass us. But then like at a certain point we're like, nah, no, that's, <laughs> is gonna... that's, that's going to hit, hit us. So, you know, we had everybody come in, but didn't Alan and like one or two other people get stuck yeah, under that bridge? Under a bridge and it was Josh. Josh was under the, the bridge. Yeah. Yep, and then there was another boat that was underneath them as well, too. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah no, you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you don't mess with weather. And, you know, after some of the experiences I've had, too, I'm just like, yeah, safety, your life is not, you know, worth yeah. risking to, uh, you know, stay out here for that extra <laughs> 10 minutes or whatever yeah, type of thing. What are you going to do? You just got to get off the water. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, well, other than that, I think that's, uh, maybe about it. All I have. Do you have anything else that, uh, you want to share with anybody? Any yeah. hopes, dreams, you know? <laughs> well, I, you know, just maybe <laughs> to touch on the, the Rocktown Adventures team a little bit. You know, yeah. Something, yeah. I wanted to, you know, it's new for me this year. I'm excited about that. Uh, Brian, you know, he's the host, host of the OG show there on, on Paddle of Finney. He reached out to me, uh, about doing that. That was, I was really excited for that. Sounds like fun. Uh, sounds like next week we're going to be doing um, uh, recording a safety video. I know that uh, Jason was on the podcast recently, and, and they talked about cold water reentry and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about getting together. We had a lunch probably about a week ago, a week or two ago. Nice. Talk about that. Yeah, we all got together, got our jerseys. That was pretty cool. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I got a jersey. <laughs> fancy now. I have a, right? a team jersey. <laughs> Heck, yeah. And I'm excited about that. And that, that's one thing I, I definitely want to or hopefully see more in the kayak stuff is, is kind of like team tournaments. That was, you know, we talked about that doing the crossroads. That was really fun. But, yeah. You know, we've yep. talked about doing some shop, some shop battles between the different kayak teams. So I would love right. for that, that to happen. So dude. Yeah. I could probably convince the quest team to come. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I'm like, in. What, four of us. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we got the quest guys. I know that we, the guys out there in Ohio at Loveland, they, they were right. the ones that were, I think they challenged us or something after we got the rock town team. Mm -hmm. up. They were like, Hey, all right. Meet in the middle somewhere in Indiana. Let's go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, the White River in Indiana was pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. You did, did that tournament. I really should have, should have gone to that one, too. Yeah. 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 That was that was a lot of fun, I will say, for my first time fishing on a river like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that was awesome. But yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what you guys do with that this year. Yeah, me so, too. It's the first year for that. So. Right? Yeah. Heck yeah. So... Awesome. Awesome. Well, anything else you got for us? I think that was it. Just want to shout out those guys and, you know, we kind of touched on a lot of good stuff. All right. Good deal. And, uh, Titus, uh, you've got uh, Instagram, right? Yes, I do. Oh yeah. You can follow me. I don't have a, a lot of followers yet, so please follow <laughs> me. It's, uh, at Titus underscore Dominguez, T I T U S D O M I N G U E Z. All right. So follow him along on Instagram and uh, with that, I think we'll wrap it up for the night, guys. Uh, so uh, we'll say good night, and uh, we'll see you guys on the water. Awesome. Go check out the website, guys. Paddle, the letter N and fin.com. Also, check out YouTube, youtube.com forward slash paddle and fin. 
you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're doing giveaways, announcements, things like that at Facebook and Instagram at paddle and fin. Shout out to our show supporters, Rocktown Adventures, Leveling Canoe and Kayak, Hammered Lures, Fish Mob Lures, TRC Covers, Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com. You can put the Paddle and Fin logo right on your catch board. Don't forget to go over and pick up your Jig Masters jigs. Use promo code PNF20 and save 20% today. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps grow the audience, helps others find our podcast. So please drop a five-star rating in on the podcast platform you're listening on. Don't forget about the Recycled Plastics program, you guys. Take your used plastic baits, put them in an envelope, mail them to the address in the show notes. Our man Eric Richards at Hammered Lures melts those down, makes new baits, and donates them to various chapters of Heroes on the Water.